Hey everyone, today we're going to be going over case studies. It's one of the things I get asked is let's code some stuff from scratch. So this is a case study, you know, the AEPC changed the CPC exam and all their other exams in 2022 to provide some case studies. And those are going to be multiple choice on the certification exams. But today we're going to be doing an operative report and just kind of coding it from scratch as a general one. It's a thyroidectomy. I pulled it from my friends over at mtsamples.com. So thank you very much for providing this. I'm going to leave a PDF copy in the comments in case you want to follow along and it's harder to look at the screen and sometimes I know it's easier to look at those PDF copies and do it yourself as we're kind of going through. By the way, if you're new here, I'm Victoria. I'm a medical coder, auditor, educator, content creator, and on my channel I provide tips, tricks, and tutorials to help you be successful in a medical coding career. If you haven't already, you definitely want to hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so that you can get alerts when I post new episodes, all kinds of coding content, how to code, coding guidelines, E and M, how to find a job, how to get certified, what certification do you know? Like I, we, we cover the gamut here on this channel. And let me tell you guys, there's, there's some stuff in the works. So you definitely want to make sure you hit that notification bell so that you know when a new episode is coming up because there's some game changing stuff coming up. But without further ado, let's get into this case study. This particular beauty here is a thyroidectomy and it's for a thyroid goiter. So we're going to start out here. Pre-op and post-operative diagnoses are the same. This was likely sent to pathology, but I'm sure it didn't come back as anything other than thyroid goiter. So chances are good that that's the final diagnosis that we're going to be going with. But we also want to be checking the operative report and see if there's anything else we want to abstract. We don't just take that pre-op, post-op diagnosis and go, yep, that's it, and throw that only that on. We have to read this whole report and make sure we're abstracting everything we can out of it. So here's our anesthesia. Now, we're not coding for the anesthesia services for this. We're going to code for the surgery. We're going to be coding for this total thyroidectomy that's going on here. So no complications. The pathology was just the thyroid, so it came back as a thyroid goiter. And here's our indications for the procedure. So why are we doing this? A little bit of the history background of what is going on. So this is a female with Graves' disease. And that is actually, you know, something we can abstract here, right? Graves' disease. This patient has Graves' disease female patient with Graves disease, and that is an active diagnosis, right? So we should put that on the on the uh, claim form as well and abstract it as a coder. So suppression was attempted, however, it was unsuccessful. So she presents today with her thyroid goiter. A thyroidectomy was indicated at this time, secondary to the patient's chronic condition. Now that's why we wanna make sure we put on this Graves disease too, because you may see that there might be something in that patient's insurance coverage, that it's not just the goiter, but also this Graves disease that they wanna see on the claim in order to have this thyroidectomy paid. So we wanna make sure that we're abstracting all the pertinent diagnoses to paint that medical picture, as my friend Sonal Patel says, and abstract everything related to it. Because having that in there paints that better medical picture of what's going on with that patient. So they attempted the suppression, it was unsuccessful, they have Graves' disease. So indications, alternatives, risks, consequences, benefits, and details of the procedure, including the specifically the risk recur of recurrent laryngeal nerve paresis or paralysis or vocal cord dysfunction and possible trach, they, those were discussed with the patient. So the provider had that discussion with the patient, hey, here are the risks of the procedure. Um, and the patient agreed to proceed. A full informed consent was obtained. So they got that consent that the patient said, yep, I'm aware of the risks, blah, 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 blah. I still want to have this procedure done. Now we move on to the body of the operative report. This is the description of what happened to this procedure. So if there was nothing additional done, all of this procedure should really just match up with total thyroidectomy. But we have to read through it because sometimes we find things in here that are not bundled in that primary procedure that we could bill out separately, or we find out that something happened and it wasn't necessarily the intended procedure that we thought we were doing, it was something else. So we can't just code off of this procedure performed. Everything has to be verified and described appropriately in this body section here, this procedure section. 
So it says, patient was brought by the Department of Anesthesiology, brought back to surgical suite and given IV access and general endotracheal anesthesia. A 9cc of 1% lidocaine with 1 to 100 thousandths of epinephrine was infiltrated into the area of demarcated above the substernal notch. Time is allowed for full hemostasis to be achieved. So then the patient was then prepped and they were draped in the normal sterile fashion. So anesthesia, now we're prepping and draping them. A number 10 blade was then utilized to make an incision in the pre-demarcated and anesthetized area. Unipolar electrocautery was utilized for hemostasis. Finger dissection was carried out into the superior and inferior planes. Platysma was identified and dissected and a subplatysma plane was created in the superior and inferior medial and lateral dissections using hemostat, medicine balm, and blunt dissection. So that platysma, that's that um, area of your neck kind of between your like jaw here and your almost like uh, collarbone area. So these muscle fibers here. And they did blunt dissection. Blunt dissection means probably oftentimes the same as finger dissection. They use a blunt object, a blunt instrument, or even a finger because it's a blunt object and separate that out with blunt dissection. I always say, kind of think of like when you're, when you're pulling the skin from underneath a turkey or something using your finger, that would technically be blunt dissection. You'd be dissecting the skin from the uh, meat with your finger. The strap muscles were identified. The midline raft was not easily identifiable at the time. So an incision was made through what appeared to be in the midline raft and dissection was carried down to the thyroid. The sternohyphoid and sternothyroid muscles were identified and separated on the patient's right side and then subsequently on the left side. It was noted at this time that the thyroid lobule on the right side is a bilobule. Kittner blunt dissection was utilized to bluntly dissect the overly overlying thyroid fascia as well as strap muscles off the thyroid force in the lateral direction. This was carried down to the inferior and superior areas. The superior pole of the right lobule was then identified. A hemostat was placed in the cricothyroid groove and a kittener was placed in this area. A second kittener was placed on the lateral aspect of the superior pole and the superior pole of the right thyroid was retracted inferiorly. So careful dissection was then carried out in a very meticulous fashion in the superior lobe and identified the appropriate vessels and cauterized with bipolar or ligated with the suture ligature. This was carried out until the superior pole was identified. Careful attention was made to avoid any nerve injury in the area. Dissection was then carried down and again bluntly separating the inferior and superior lobes of those thyroids. The bilobed right thyroid was then retracted medially. The recurrent laryngeal nerve was then identified and tracked to its insertion because we don't want to accidentally nick any nerves. We want to make sure that we identify those and go, don't, don't mess with the nerves. The overlying vessels of the middle thyroid vein, as well as the associated structures were then identified and great attention was made to perform a right, careful, meticulous dissection, dissection. So they're dissecting down there. They're removing it, getting ready to remove it, to remove the fascial attachments superficial to the recurrent laryngeal nerve off the thyroid. When it was completed, this lobule was then removed. So they removed it from Barry's ligament. There was noted to be no isthmus at this time and the entire right lobule was sent to pathology for further evaluation. So we've taken the right side of that thyroid. The thyroid has two sides to it. it kind of looks like a little bit of a butterfly. So the right side was removed and now they're saying we're going to over to the left side, right? So then attention was then diverted to the patient's left side in a similar fashion. Sternohyphoid and sternothyroid muscles were already separated. Army Navy as well as femoral retractors were used to lateralize the appropriate musculature. The middle thyroid vein was identified. So blunt dissection, again, we're going in with a blunt object, possibly a finger even, was carried out laterally to superiorly once again. A hemostat was utilized to make an opening in the cricothyroid groove and a kittener was then placed in the area. Another kittener was placed on the lateral aspect of the superior lobe and then the left thyroid retracted. Once again, meticulous dissection, so they're dissecting, was utilized to identify the appropriate structures in the superior pole of the left thyroid. Suture ligature as well as bipolar cauterily was utilized for hemostasis.
Once again, a careful attention was made not to injure the nerves in the area. Superior pull was then freed. So they've got it. They've got it out. They've got it. They freed it. And blunt dissection was carried down to lateral and inferior aspects. The inferior aspect was then identified. The inferior thyroid artery and vein were then identified and ligated. The left thyroid was then metalized. Recurrent laryngeal nerve was identified. Careful dissection was carried out to remove the fascial attachments superficial to the recurrent laryngeal nerve on the side as close to the thyroid as possible. Thyroid was then removed. So now we took out the left, the right, and now we've got the left removed from the Barry's ligament and it was sent to pathology for further evaluation. Evaluation of the visceral space did not reveal any bleeding at this time. And now we're just, we've got the thyroid moved. So this part is just gonna be kind of like suturing the patient and cleaning them up and then make sure that they're wheeled out to the PACU for recovery. So was irrigated, pinpoint areas were bipolar as necessary. Surgical cell was placed bilaterally, strap muscles as well as the appropriate fascial attachments were approximated with sutures. The platysma was identified and approximated with sutures and the subdermal plane was approximated with sutures. Running suture consisting of 5-O-proline suture was then placed, and fast-absorbing 6-O was then placed in a running fashion. Steri strips, Tinkoban, Bacterin, and a pressure gauze was placed. Patient was then admitted for further evaluation and supportive care. Patient tolerated the procedure well and was taken to the post-anesthesia care unit in stable condition. So let's start with this by looking up our CPT code first. So we're going to go into our CPT book and we're going to look in our index under the word thyroidectomy. So let me get you a little cleaned up here. Thyroidectomy. So you can see here we've got a, let me zoom you in. We've got partial, secondary, and then total. And then we have different approaches. Cervical approach for malignancy, removal of all thyroid tissue, and then we have sternal split transthoracic approach. So in our particular case, this wasn't for malignancy. We didn't do the neck dissection, removal of all thyroid tissue. I don't think we did sternal and split transthoracic. So let's go with these codes here. Our totals that are the 60240, 60721. Those are our two options that CPT is telling us to look at. So this is the same as the cervical approach. Uh, and you can kind of see sometimes like they'll tell you things like cervical approach, but that's also one of the options here just under total in general. So sometimes kind of take a look at that when you're dissecting down to what code it should be. Like this code is, is included in the, the total options and under the just kind of general setting. You can also check what the code might be in the table of contents. So if we go to our female genital system at the very end here is where our endocrine system stuff is. And then here's all our procedures done on the thyroid gland and then parathymoid, thymus, adrenal glands, pancreas, and carotid body. So here are our thyroid glands. And that's the range that we were told to go to that 60240 code, which is over here, 60240, thyroidectomy, total or complete. The other option we had was the 60271, which would be thyroidectomy, including substernal thyroid. There's our semicolon. So then we go down here to cervical approach. So we didn't do that substernal thyroid. It was just the thyroidectomy total or complete. Now we want to read the notes here. It says for thyroidectomy subtotal or partial to use 60721, but that wasn't what we did. So we're good with the 60240. I'm going to write that on my operative report. So 60, oh, I don't want to write this down. I know sometimes I transpose things, 60240. And then let's check our ICD-10 code. I have the AAPC version of the ICD-10CM book. So depending on the version that you're utilizing, you might have different features. You might have it, your uh, alphabetic index in a different location. So you may see different things depending on what version of the ICD-10CM book you have. My top two versions of ICD-10CM, I know everyone loves Bucks. I've actually never had a Bucks before. I like the AAPC version and I like the Optum 360 versions of the ICD-10CM. So let's take a look. What were the two conditions that were coded here? We, we abstracted thyroid goiter and Graves disease. So let's take a look at our Index, we'll start with G for goiter. How about that? 
So here's our goiter. It gives us the code of EO 4.9. You can see kind of everything under this section is usually around the EO 1s through kind of EO 5, it looks like. So that's giving us a good spot to kind of know that they're not too far apart, right? So I'm not seeing anything super specific to kind of the information we were given here regarding this particular goiter. So let's take a look at our default code here, our EO 4.9. I'm actually writing that down so that I don't forget it and then I'll just erase it if that's not right. So here we go, the category is EO 4 other non-toxic goiter. It says here it excludes congenital goiters perinicumatosis and iodine deficiency related goiters. That's not what we were doing. So here we have our EO 4.9 is non-toxic goiter unspecified, um, goiter not otherwise specified, nodule goiter non-toxic not otherwise specified. So since they didn't uh, give further information in our operative report, it just says thyroid goiter, we're gonna have to go with that not otherwise specified code, the EO 4.9. Now we also wanna make sure though that we get our Graves disease on there. So let's see, I feel like it would be under D for disease, but sometimes you find those ones like Graves disease under the G codes. Ah, so Graves disease, it says C hyperthyroidism with goiter. Oh, I wonder if we're gonna have some excludes notes here. Yeah, and if you look under disease grave, same thing, hyperthyroidism with goiter. So here we are, hyperthyroidism. So hyperthyroidism with goiter, EO 5.00. EO 5.00, let's take a look at that. So here we are, EO 5.00, and it lists right here, uh, Graves disease. So EO 5.00, thyroid toxosis with diffuse goiter without thyroid toxic crisis or storm, right? So there's no excludes note saying, okay, don't use EO 4.9 with EO 5.00. So it looks like we can code both of them together. All right, so we've got 60240 for our CPT code for the procedure, E04.9 and E05.00 for our ICD-10CM codes. I hope you guys found this helpful. If there's a specific type of procedure or service you'd like me to see if I can dig up and then do a demonstration of how to code it, definitely let me know in the comments below. I can always add that to my list of content ideas. And depending on how complex it is, it could even be a short video or a TikTok. If you haven't checked me out on TikTok, definitely check out Contempo Coding on TikTok. Anyway, I will see you guys in the next episode. And until then, just keep on coding on.